these students are portraying what we consider bad taste in school attire and behavior. This student is wearing an ankle bracelet, dungarees, and dropped earrings. This student is wearing an extremely tight skirt and tight sweater. Open shirt, black jacket, dungarees are mentioned in the code as not proper school attire. This group is our ideal of the proper school attire and social behaviors of the Hicksville Junior High students. Ever since starting high school, something has snuck its way into my room. Got uncomfortable. Kicked off its shoes, sunk its claws into my floor, and burrowed deep inside my closet. It has made a hole there. It looks an awful lot like a monster. Sometimes it stitches itself into the seams of my clothing so that I can't forget that it exists. It doesn't like being ignored. Jenny thinks that she has the key to popularity, parking in cars with the boys at night. When Jerry brags about taking Jenny out, he learns that she dates all the boys, and he feels less important. What about Jenny? Does that make her really popular? Do the boys and girls like her? Is she welcome to join this group? Hi, Betty, Ellie. You can rest your tray here, Jenny, for a minute. Thanks. Say, Wally, how's the play coming along? Oh, OK, Jenny. Here, Jenny. No, Thanks, Jerry, girls who park in cars are not really popular. Not even with the boys they park with. Not when they meet at school or elsewhere. It's pretty creepy, really. Sometimes I think it whispers in my ear while I'm sleeping, because when I wake up, phrases are etched into my memory. Phrases like, smile more, talk less. Could you try to be less emotional? Not so bad, really, except for comments like the last one. Monster is an amazing seamstress, apparently. The other day, a lady tugged down on my skirt in an attempt to cover more of my exposed legs. When I told her that it was supposed to be that short, she looked at me like I had a scarlet A on my chest. Didn't see that one, Monster. Must have been too busy worrying whether or not my shoulders were showing. Or ignoring the insults you threw at me after I ignored your wolf whistle. Sometimes its needle-like claws unbury themselves from the floor and find themselves in me instead poking and pinning every inappropriate piece of me, I ask it, why do I have to put on armor every time I step outside? just as cruel to them as it is to me. Ever since starting high school, they've stopped talking like they used to. They're stiff. Like there's some code of conduct that says boys must expand past their limits, past their comfort zones, manifesting their own destiny, grabbing the world with an iron fist, deem no task too daunting, and above all, don't be a girl. It's 
USA to play with. Just flip up the sight, pull back the bolt, and fire. Sometimes it seems like I have to swim through a current just to ask how he's been. I can't understand why he's become so cold and distant. Why it seems like I'm talking to a shell of a person that I knew once before, and I ask him why it seems like his voice isn't his words, don't speak his words, don't reflect himself, and I ask him if he is drowning. He says no. I am not drowning. I am not swimming, not even waiting, I am floating, on a sea of my own consciousness that I cannot baptize myself in, like I can touch everything I want to be but cannot feel it, like Monster won't let me feel it, like Monster said sadness is for sissies, like Monster chained me to a lifeboat even when I said I wanted to swim, to feel the water on my face. The monster said, man up. One of my friends was really sensitive in elementary school. His favorite color was purple. He didn't mind coloring with the girls instead of running with the boys. And somehow, an episode of Magic School Bus made him cry. Twice. I don't know what happened. But for some reason, he's really angry now. I wonder if the monster told him that he could walk on water. <laughs> 